Hello everyone and thanks for joining me on another video here. Now in this video I'm going to look at the radio information that gets captured when you do a Wi-Fi um, packet capture. So we'll check this out. The way I usually do packet captures is with a MacBook uh, because it works well and I like it. Okay, so I've done a couple of packet captures for this demo here, but I'm just going to view them on the Linux box here. Okay, so we'll dive straight into it. Now as you can see, I've just got one frame. It's a beacon. Okay, that's what we're looking at. And if we have a, a bit of a look at what's in here, you can see the SSID because it's not hidden. And you can also see that I've got the one meg bit rates enabled, which is my pet hate. I, I don't like the low bit rates, which I'll get to at another time, but they're in this video for a reason. But the point is, you can see all this information down here, okay? You've got your security stuff. All, look, all the information that you need to join the network, because that's what the beacon has. Now, that information got put there by the transmitter, which was the access point. But there's more information in this packet capture than just what was um, put in there from the access point, okay? So if we go up to the top here, you'll see this radio tap header. And it's radio information, which for the most part is the same. Okay, this stuff here, I'll just go to the radio information itself. If you look at uh, channel, we know it's channel 11 because we saw that down here, right? It's not quite the same. We have the data rate, one megasecond. Now, that isn't encoded in the beacon, that's just what it happened to be in the air. Now, the point here is this radio information got added to the frame just for, so you could, you know, see it here, but it's information that was only found out when the receiver received the frame. So you can see a prime example is the, the signal strength, okay, which is all vendor specific, but uh, there's a value that they can use to put in uh, signal strength, also noise level, which is technically only worked out from demodulated 802.11 frames, but the fact is this is radio information. So the modulation will also be there somewhere. Radio tap header, let's have a look. There it is. You can see it CCK OFDM, there's your modulation. Somewhere it'll say true. There it is. Okay, because the receiver, as, as part of this uh, re receiving the frame, it knew what modulation it was, it knows what you know the signal strength was and that sort of thing. But there's one thing I want to point out in particular. If we look at the channel, this channel here in the radio information means it's the channel that the ra receiving radio was on when it received it. Now you might think, okay, of course it's on 11 because it was transmitting on 11. But at the 1 and 2 megabit um, bit rates, you can have a lot of crosstalk. And I'll show you what I mean. I've got another packet capture here from the same access point. Okay, so all of this is the same. We know it was transmitting on channel 11 and the rest of it's the same. But if we look at the radio information this time, it shows channel 9. Now, how does that work? Well, as I said, the radio information here says what the radio in the receiver was doing. So I was scanning on channel 9 at that particular point doing wireless uh, packet captures. Now, the transmitter, the AP, was still transmitting on channel 11, but at one megabit per second, using that modulation that we saw, they're not distinct channels, okay? There's a lot of channel overlap. So there's enough for it to decipher the whole message and get the beacon, but the point is, it wasn't actually on the specific channel that it should have been, channel 11. And that is why um, adjacent channels are a big problem in uh, 2.4 gigahertz. Now I've shown this using the one and two meg uh, bit rates. If I drop them off and just have say 11 as my lowest uh, bit rate, which is what I usually use in 2.4, it's harder to see this because the modulation changes and uh, it doesn't, it'll still interfere with it. It'll still see energy on most of its channel, but it's just not enough to decipher it. But here is a good example of why you shouldn't use adjacent channels in 2.4 gig. But it's not to be overlooked. If you want to see actual radio information about a frame that you're capturing, don't forget to look at the radio, uh, the radio information up here and the radio tap header, because it tells you the RF stuff that you wouldn't otherwise see, because that's, that's the layer one stuff and that doesn't need to get passed through here for the rest of the beacon. Okay, so there's just a, a bit of info for you and uh, keep it in mind and don't be shy to do packet captures. 
You tapped that ass, didn't you?